to Mr. Wes Durham, longtime voice of the Atlanta Falcons, and uh, just uh, for Fox Sports South, and it's an uh, honor to be joined by you, Wes, and thanks for taking the time this afternoon. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad we could work it out. Thanks for asking me, guys. How are you? Good. How about you? And uh, you, let's just talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, your new gig with Fox Sports. And, uh, well, first off, you know, longtime voice of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, 18 years, over 700 football and basketball games called. And, and unfortunately for Clemson fans, Georgia Tech had a lot of good memories up here in Death Valley with, uh, with Calvin Johnson. And just talk about that a little bit before we get into your, your new gig. Well, I was very blessed to, to get an opportunity to go to Georgia Tech in 1995 and, and to move to Atlanta. And the, and the people at Georgia Tech were just incredible. And, uh, you know, I, had, I, I really was very fortunate to have two of the best jobs in the country uh, for about the last nine years. And not only doing Georgia Tech football and basketball, but also in 2004 when I started doing the Falcons. So, uh, you know, I, I, feel, I feel very blessed to, about the professional life that I've been able to lead there and so forth. And yeah, we had some great Clemson Georgia Tech football games. We had some unbelievable basketball games as well. And, um, and for all the Calvin Johnson moments, uh, there was Woody Dantzler accounting for about 540 some yards total offense one day in Atlanta too. So, or, uh, or Emory Smith running for about 200 yards and a half. I remember in 1995. So it's a, it's a great football rivalry. I'm glad they still are able to do it every year. Uh, I'd hate for the history and the tradition of the Clemson Georgia Tech game to go by the boards with all the expansion, unfortunately, for us at that. Right, and, and talk a little bit about um, your dad, obviously, Mr. Woody Durham, being longtime voice of the Tar Heels. Did that kind of uh, spark your interest in the in the uh, industry? I guess growing up with that, some of those great North Carolina teams that that would have been unbelievable to see some of those teams back in the heyday of the ACC. Yeah, it was uh, obviously my dad's job had a, uh, had a tremendous influence on what I ultimately wanted to do um, because I wasn't going to be big enough, fast enough, strong enough, uh, or able to shoot or defend anybody well enough to uh, to play at a, at a higher level other than high school. So uh, my dad was able to stay in touch with sports by doing games and, and being involved in the early days of ACC basketball on television before he started doing Carolina in 1971. And, um so when I became 14 or so, I, I knew that my basketball and athletic career wasn't long for this earth. So I needed to, I needed to find out what I really wanted to do. And, and it, it's, an, it's a great way to stay involved in, in sports. And I've been, I've been very fortunate not only to, to decide at an early age what I kind of wanted to do, but then to have a great college experience. And my professional steps have been, uh, have been very, uh, I've uh, been very lucky there, too. I mean, each each of the professional jobs that I've been involved in since I graduated from Elon have uh, have been uh, have been very rewarding, and including this latest one that uh, kind of came out of nowhere last summer. So I've been very lucky, and, uh, and he was a tremendous influence. And part of the reason I left Vanderbilt in 1995 to come to Atlanta was because I wanted to do games in the ACC with my dad. Uh, that had been a goal of mine that, Somehow or another, I might be able to do games in the ACC, and, and fortunately enough, we we got to a point where, for you know, a good while, sixteen years, we were able to do that. That was kind of cool. Right, it really must have been. And one one last question before we move on to Fox Sports, and uh, talk about obviously with you, Colin, Georgia Tech, one of the one of the legends in the business. I think I saw an interview with you on uh, YouTube talking about uh, the relationship that you had with uh, one of the best in the business. I know we're comfortable, but Larry Munson, he was one of the sure. best. And, and just talk about that if you could a little bit. Well, you know, I, I think one of, the, one of the neat things about our business, um, and even though I'm in television, I still consider myself a radio guy at heart because that's what I grew up around. Um, uh, but I was, uh, I was very fortunate to have a, a friendship with Larry, much as I was with Jim Phillips, uh, who did Clemson for so many years. I, Jim and I got to play probably a dozen rounds of golf together uh, in the 90s after I got to Georgia Tech. Uh, it could have been, you know, most of it was done during the baseball tournament, ironically. Um, and we play a couple rounds a year at Cliffs or something like that with Roger Berry, who was a mutual friend of ours. And, you know, so my friendship and relationships with those guys, I, I, I cherish. Uh, the one I had with Larry was one that started because we'd both done Vanderbilt in our careers. And, um, of course, when I was at Vanderbilt, he was obviously still doing Georgia. Um, but I, I cherish those relationships and those people like Johnny Holliday, who's now 35 years at the University of Maryland, or Bob Harris, who's 38 years at Duke. He and my dad went to high school together in North Carolina. I mean, 
you can't help but in this business respect those that have done just an unbelievable job. Al Serraldo at Georgia Tech was the same way. He did the games for 43 years. Um, Bob Fulton at South Carolina. I mean, you can just go on and on and on. And we still have a few of them in this industry today. Bob Davis out of Kansas is one who's just spectacular. Uh, has been doing KU for so many years. And, uh, and and I think we're blessed to be in this business because of the of the ground that those guys kind of move for us in, in making it such a, a dramatic medium and one that in our part of the country people rely on so much. I mean, there's there's no greater compliment a radio announcer can be paid than fans who who go to you know Frank Howard Field or go to Little John Coliseum at Clemson or any venue in college and take a radio to listen to the game. I mean, that's just the best compliment they can give you because they're counting on you, even though they paid their money, uh, so forth, bought their seats, bought their parking, all that stuff. They're counting on you to help them enjoy the game. And that's just an incredible compliment. And, and I feel blessed to have gotten to know guys like that over the years. And Larry was one of the best, um, just a, just an unbelievable character of our generation and uh we're fortunate through the magic of technology now to still enjoy so many of these great calls in Georgia. right and um let's talk a little bit about obviously with you uh moving on from georgia tech after your long uh service there and just talk a, lot, a little bit about this new uh fox sports and what you're doing with the acc football and basketball and uh and I think you've done an unbelievable job this year uh, moving from radio to TV. And uh, how much have you enjoyed that, uh, doing the TV aspect this year? No, it's been great. I've been uh, – I, I was fortunate in, in a couple of respects. One, that I got to do a change like this at, at my age and at this spot in my career. Um, obviously, when you're 25 years removed from college and you've been in radio almost exclusively, uh, for somebody to offer you a full-time opportunity to do television is, uh, is an incredible hit. The second part that I was very fortunate with is that I was going to work in the same league where I'd done games. So I knew the production people, the people at Fox Sports, the folks at Raycom. I, I had a, a very superficial relationship with them, but I always appreciated and respected the way they did their business. So for me to have an opportunity to join them was just an incredible opportunity, and professionally it was a, it was a no-brainer. Emotionally it was difficult, obviously, to step away from Georgia Tech after 18 years, but uh, the move to television has been very energizing. Uh, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Our football package, we had some really good games. Uh, we got to go to some great venues, obviously. And then in basketball, the, you know, just the, the, the move of the ACC to, to 15 teams and, uh, the ability to work with different people, analysts on the air, but also producers and, and our crew has just been, uh, it's just been really fun and, and I've enjoyed it a great deal. And, Tomorrow will be my last broadcast on television for the year for basketball, and then Dan Bonner and I will resume with a, a baseball package uh, here in about two or three weeks. But but I have really, really enjoyed the basketball and the football experience so far. Right, and let's talk a little bit about um, some of the ACC hoops this year. Um, obviously, I'm here on Pac-Man every week. We had him on uh, back in November, and that, that was sure. pretty neat too. And just talk a little bit about uh, – some of the teams you think can make a deep run and, and talk a little bit. You've seen a couple of Clemson games, and uh, yeah. what, what kind of chance do you give them of making the tournament? Well, I, you know, Clemson's in a really interesting situation tomorrow. I mean, you know, for Coach Brownell and his team to, you know, uh, to, to put this thing together where they've got an opportunity, obviously, tomorrow if they beat Pittsburgh to finish, uh, to potentially finish in fifth place in the league is a great statement about the work he's done there in four years. Um, I think KJ obviously McDaniel's has obviously done a great job leading that team. Uh, you know, there are not many guys in the country that are top ten in five different categories, and so he deserves a tremendous amount of credit. But my observation of Clemson is one that was just confirmed to me last week when I had the double overtime game there at, at Clemson was that for Clemson to be really really successful in the tournament and really anywhere going forward, it's going to depend on how well Rod Hall plays because I think when Rod Hall plays well, they really play well. And uh, and it's interesting. They're a fun team to watch. The one thing I, I will say is I think they are a really, really good defensive team. I think they and Virginia are the two best defensive teams in the league. And if Clemson can bring the defensive intensity every night um, and not waver off of it, uh, I think they've got a chance to, to do some things in the tournament. It won't be easy because they're going to tangle with a four seed probably uh, after they play the, I guess the winner of, I'm not even sure how the bracket works anymore with 15 teams, but once they, once they get through the Thursday game, they're probably going to play the four seed, I think is the way it shakes out. And that four seed could be anybody. Remember, you could get Duke, you could get Syracuse, you could get Carolina in there. So 
Uh, the only team they won't play is Virginia at this juncture. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing. They're one of the teams that I think will be interesting in Greensboro, but it also is predicated on how they play uh, against Pittsburgh. I, I think that has a lot to do with their momentum here at the stretch. I thought the win over Miami the other night, and I've got Miami at Wake tomorrow. I thought that was an important win for them. Um, I don't know if there is a magic number for Clemson and Greensboro. I was asked that about several schools this week. I don't know if there's a magic number for Clemson. The, the figure in the RPI and the strength of schedule is going to be a lot to overcome. Some will tell you they're probably going to play this Sunday. Some may even tell you they got to win it. Uh, others may say they got to go to Saturday. I, I just don't know what the magic number is right now for anybody outside of those uh, top four schools, and that includes Pittsburgh. I think a Pittsburgh loss to Clemson really damages kind of their last ten ball games a little bit, and it'll, it'll force the Panthers to kind of buckle down in Greensboro as well. Right, and it really will. And let's talk a, a couple other good games this weekend, obviously Duke and North Carolina. And what do you make of the way Syracuse has uh, struggled over the last couple of weeks? Well, it's really it's really pretty basic for Syracuse. They're not a great offensive basketball team. Um, and what they do is play defense very well. And they're a good team. It's not Coach Beheim's most talented team by a long shot, but it might be one of his better teams collectively. The problem is that they can't be a two-man show of C.J. Fair and Tyler Ennis. Syracuse has to get somebody else to score. Ennis and Fair can probably get them a combined anywhere from 48 to 55 points a game. Syracuse is going to have a hard time winning if they can't score 70 points. Um, and the other night against Georgia Tech, they didn't score 70 points. They didn't come close. And so I think most of it is predicated, unfortunately, on the perimeter shooting. And Trevor Cooney's just not been very good at all. I think he Eight of his last 37 uh, in the last few ball games, uh, last four or five ball games here. Um, so they need to probably sharpen up Cooney a little bit. Uh, the other thing is they're going to need to get some semblance of Jeremy Grant back on the floor. He's too he's too valuable doing the intangible things that like a KJ McDaniels does for Clemson. He gets his hand on deflected passes. He steals. He keeps shots alive at the offensive glass. He does the little things. And, and he is a big, big reason for their 25 and 0 start, and they need him back on the floor, certainly in Greensboro. I think the team that is going to have to fight demons like crazy is Virginia. Everybody says, how can you say that? They, they got a chance to finish the league 17 and 1. If they finish the league 17 and 1 and beat Maryland, remember that the Maryland game will be the only game they've played in a 13 day stretch. When they beat Syracuse on Saturday, they play Maryland eight days later, and then they will not play again for six more days until they play the following Friday in Greensboro. Also remember their history. Virginia has not won more than one game at the ACC tournament since 1994. That's an unbelievable figure when you think about it. So, uh, you know, they're going to have to fight some demons, but they are a great basketball team. Again, I, I think Harris is good, Brogdon is good, but I think collectively they're a very good basketball team. It'll be interesting to see how they handle all the little things that go with being the top seed and the school that everybody's trying to knock off in that building because it's been a long, long time since they've been there. And once again, we're joined by Mr. Wes uh, Durham from Fox Sports and also uh, Voice of the Atlanta Falcons. Before we let you get out of here, Wes, thanks again. We know you stay busy, but in addition to all the ACC work you do, you also mm-hmm. call the – Falcons with David Archer, and, and, and you also do, we all also enjoy the Barnhart and Durham, but uh, I can always remember listening, to, it was on 540 WDAK on Sunday <laughs> afternoons playing golf, listening to the Falcons in Columbus, so no, it was always great, but just talk a little bit about um, Atlanta, they struggled, they really struggled last year, and, and, and sure. coming off that great year, how, how close are they, what, what direction do you think they'll go in the draft? Well, I, I don't know what direction they're going to go in the draft, I really think it'll be predicated by where they, what they do in free agency next week. Um, and it really, you can quantify their 2013 by the word injuries. Just too many guys got hurt in too many key positions. Obviously, Julio Jones was a, a tremendous injury for them to suffer. Uh, but they also lost Sean Weatherspoon. They lost Steven Jackson. Roddy White was never really healthy until about the last third of the season. So that's, that's most of their problem from a year ago. They've got to shore up the offensive and defensive line. There's no secrets anymore about where that is. Um, they missed on some guys. Uh, they've got to find ways to to uh, stabilize both those offensive and defensive lines. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in free agency because there are two or three guys out there that kind of fit what they want to do. Um, how fast will they go financially to move that money in that free agency? Uh, they've got to get some other things worked out with guys still on the roster. Um, it, it's going to be interesting, and that's why the NFL is the NFL because – 
they have this checks and balances of, of keeping teams balanced, I guess, is the best way I can tell you. When you think you're, when you think you're ready to be 16 and 0, you're going to be about 4 and 12. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why the sport is as, as great as it is. I think, you know, the Carolina Panthers are a really good example. Teams that have been really close, all of a sudden the light can go on and you have a great year. Um, and the Falcons are hoping to be able to return, but they've got to stabilize both lines of play before I think their optimism can really return to success. Right, and one last quick question. I saw, saw where you're an avid golfer. So what's your favorite uh, golf course in Atlanta? Have... Cool. Well, I belong to Golf Club Georgia, so I better say there. Um, I've played East Lake several times, um, but uh, but I like playing just any time I can once the season's over. I cheat a little bit, try and squeeze a Sunday afternoon out once basketball, football season in. I played once. I cheated uh, two weeks ago. wasn't very good, but I didn't care. And uh, hopefully, here in about two weeks, I'll be I'll be working on my golf game, and it'll run pretty hot, or at least as much as I can play until uh, until I get to the uh, start of training camp with the Falcons. And hopefully, with this ACC baseball package we're going to do uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to play some Friday afternoons at places like the Walker Course at Clemson and spots like that. Thanks again, Wes. We appreciate you joining us. And uh, if you come up here to the Walker course, give us a call. Okay, guys. Take care. Thanks for asking me, okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was our pleasure, and we're just honored that you would come on and join us. Thanks very much. Take care. Have a great weekend. You too. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, great to be joined by Wes Durham there, longtime voice of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and the uh, Atlanta Falcons. So some interesting perspective from him. Really knows his uh, basketball really well. And uh, talked about the Clemson Tigers.